Hey mamas, I am 37 weeks and I have finally completed my birth plan. A little delayed it seems, but we've got it done. And I didn't wanna just create the plan and then hope that I ran with it during labor and delivery. So I created something kind of special to help me use it and help my husband to feel like he was a part of my labor and delivery and staying on track with my birth plan. Uh, so I'm excited to show that to you guys and hopefully it'll be beneficial to you as well. Let's get started. Hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Okay, so as I mentioned, I got a little bit creative with this. So what I did was I actually created a birth plan set of cards and there's different sections and they're like design and color coded. Uh, and I have like all my information stored here. And my husband loves it. He just feels like it's really helpful. I've kind of added little things like that apply to him. So he just feels really empowered. And honestly, having all of this here in such like a pretty format <laughs> makes me feel really empowered too, uh, to actually execute this. So I'm gonna go through uh, this with you, but I also wanna let you know that I loved it so much that I actually created a whole set of blank ones um, that I'm gonna make available. There's gonna be a link in the description of this video uh, that you can download these, print them off yourself, and then just fill it in. Hopefully some of you guys get to use this, and I just wanna remind you as well that um, we love for you to describe, put subscribe to the YouTube channel and be a part of this community as we talk a lot about practical things with pregnancy, but also what does it look like to have faith in Jesus Christ and how does that impact your pregnancy? So if any of that interests you, be sure to subscribe and also ring that bell to make sure you get notifications every time a new video comes out. Okay, before I dive into the details of the labor plan cards, I just wanna give you an overview of what it looks like for me, because it might be kind of different um, for some people. My first, I had a C-section, uh, and so I know what it's like when things just don't go, like your birth plan um, kind of lays out, and other women know that they're gonna be induced. There's all these different scenarios. So for me, my plan is to attempt a VBAC. And the agreement that I have with my OBGYN is that the main goal for that is for me to be able to labor at home as long as possible and to avoid getting an induction. And so we're gonna really push this as long as we possibly can out. Um, we have the highest chances of me having a successful be back, be back if those two things are, are kind of a part of it. So um, this reflects that I'm gonna be laboring at home as long as possible, and then I'll be delivering at the hospital, and I will be using as many methods as possible to help me to not have to use um, medicated uh, medications for pain so like an epidural or other things. So the first section we have is the hospital plan overview. I like to keep things really simple. I've already delivered at this hospital and I've spoken with my OBGYN about what their practices are. So really only stuck with things that I felt were unique or that the nurses would need to know specifically that they wouldn't already naturally do. Things that I wrote for labor and delivery, I wanna be allowed to move around the room. That covers a lot of things like, don't keep me strapped up, people. I like low lights and quiet room. I want access to a birth ball and a squat bar. No pain meds offered. I'm gonna be asking if needed. That's helpful because they will offer for sure if I don't mention that. I wanna be allowed to deliver in any position that works for me, which I've already talked to my OBGYN. Unlike my first midwife with Hadley, she said I could only deliver on the bed, um, but my OBGYN could care less. She said, deliver on the hard floor if that's really what you want, which I love that. <laughs> uh, and then my husband wants to cut the cord. And then I've made some comments here as well about postpartum care. I do want delayed newborn care, skin to skin the whole first hour. I thought this was helpful because someone might be like skin to skin for a little bit and then okay, take baby and go ahead and take care of her. I just want the whole first hour. I'm exclusively breastfeeding. And I said yes to the vitamin K shot and no to eye ointment. So this is just kind of an overview, and as I mentioned, I have um, one included in here for the hospital as well, and I have like hospital copy written at the bottom of that. So yeah, keep it really simple, but it highlights all the really important things for me. My next section is pretty simple as well. This is early labor, which is the time before I have to really implement tactics to get through my contractions, or like I can't talk through my contractions. Everything prior to that, 
where it seems like my contractions are consistently building or growing, that's my early labor. And the whole focus is distraction. So ways I can distract is completing a task list that I've already created for Eric and I to get through, like complete the laundry, set up the guest room for your sister who's coming into town now that you're having a baby, and those kind of things. Um, I, can watch, I can watch a nap. That'd be interesting. <laughs> I can watch a movie or I could take a nap. Um, I remind myself it's really about resting, limiting movements. We could go out to eat, Chick-fil-A. <clears throat> I should have just put that, Chick-fil-A. Get a massage or nails done. Hey, if my early labor is a day or two, I might have time. I have some recipes prepared that I can bake some bread or a pastry, you know, some sort of pastry. That's great too because my sister's coming in town and so then I can treat them and have that. Also take a bath or a shower. If I just like don't have anything to do and just need to kind of relax, there you go. So that is early labor. Next section is active labor. This is the most cards <laughs> that I have um, because there's quite a bit that goes into this time. And active labor for me is the point where I now have to implement tactics to really feel like I can get through a contraction in a good state of mind, or maybe I can't talk through them. Um, that's the sign that I think I'm in active labor. And as I mentioned before, even though I get into active labor, that doesn't mean I'm gonna be ready to go to the hospital. So I need to implement a lot of these tactics um, in order to help me. Breath is so important. I encourage everyone to make some notes about what you plan to do as far as breathing. I'm breathing in for four seconds, out for six. I'm imagining my belly, filling up like a balloon and all that oxygen going to baby and even like mentally thinking about it like numbing the area when I'm breathing. Um, some other simple coping mechanisms that I have is the affirmations that I've have written down on these cards, using essential oils, squats. Um, that's really like if I can stay in a relaxed state, a squat physically actually eases the pain for me. That's what I experienced with Hadley, love them. Change positions. Like, I don't have to stay in one position all the time. Change a position and then putting pressure on the back. Eric did that for me a lot during my first and I loved it. He was a great support partner. Okay, then the big card that focuses on relaxing. I have this deep trance hypno video that I've been practicing through YouTube. So that's what I'll be using. And I just remind myself what those um, key, like, focuses are in that video. It's focusing on one spot, taking three deep breaths, and then beginning to count down from 10. Uh, then also focusing on loosening muscles all the way from the top of my head to the bottom of my head. That's something that my husband can help me with. And then you guys are gonna think I'm so silly, but visualization is really helpful. Something that visually helps you to relax and helps your body ease. Just me reading these words has actually relaxed me right now. So my thing is a big white fluffy duvet, which is a word basically for comforter. Just a big old down fluffy comforter that I can just snuggle around and tuck into a bed or even just float away on a cloud with. It works guys, that's what works for me. So find what works for you and visualize something that helps you relax. And then um, I have my personal meditation video, which I've created and made available on YouTube. The link will be in the description. And then also relax in a clean and peaceful room. Eric knows that's a part of his early labor task is to get my room completely ready for me to be able to do active labor in there and to rest and relax. Lots of essential oils, lots of good lighting, really clean. I think he's even planning on polishing the floors. My man. Uh, another thing that I thought was really essential to make note of during active labor is for me on these cards, like I don't talk about transition, but this is like really what's gonna help me through it is when I recognize I need a change. I've heard almost every doctor and midwife say that there seems to be this moment that all women get to where they're just like, I can't go on anymore. And that tends to be this transition phase where it's about to get really intense and then we're gonna move into pushing. And so for me, I put um, that I have a code word I'm gonna use, which is I need a change. Uh, this is all about my husband helping me, my doula helping me get through this. And I give some ideas here. You listen to empowering worship music, maybe do some of those squats. Speed up my breath, don't keep it at that four to six count. Um, speak the affirmations, even look at pictures of Hadley and my honeymoon. Those are things that give me worn, happy thoughts. And so that might distract me a little bit. And then putting like a cold washcloth on my forehead. Um, and then I put here as well, the whole point is to remember that I need to stay loose and relax. And once I've gained mental focus, so once I've felt like I was just, oh, I can't make it anymore. And once I've regained that mental focus after all these weird things that I'm gonna do to kind of make a change, then I need to go back into that state of trance and relaxation. That's the whole goal of making this change. 
Um, then I have this card about when to go to the hospital. This might not apply to you, so you don't even have to use it. Um, or it might look a little different from you. For me, I'm going to the hospital when the contractions are three to four minutes apart for one hour consistently, or within eight hours of my water breaking. Now that's something I've discussed with my OBGYN. She is okay with me not coming in right away when my water breaks. I am gonna speak with her as soon as that happens, um, but it really just depends. She's willing to maybe push it out to maybe eight hours or so, just to try to get me to labor more at home. Goodbye, cards. <laughs> Uh, and then I've also reminded that the support person that I'm with, which will be my hubby, is gonna be timing the contractions and to not even start doing it until they seem that they're at least five minutes apart. Uh, and then the last thing I have is affirmations to empower during the active labor kind of set of cards. And that might just be when I need a little power kick. My favorite is you can win this like a boss. Done. I feel empowered already. <laughs> so that is active labor. Okay, the very last section is pushing. I feel like I didn't think about this a lot with my first, like how am I gonna push baby out? But I did put a little more effort into it this time and I have just a couple of pointers for myself. Um, one is to let my body do the work. Um, there's actually something I have in the affirmations to empower that if I went into a coma, baby would come out. Like my body knows what it needs to do. Baby's gonna come out even if I was in a coma and wasn't even able to like process it. So let my body do the work, speed up my breathing, don't keep it nice and slow. That's not gonna help me to get through those contractions. Um, I can change my position if I'm not making progress. Um, and I need to remember this because I think maybe we get stuck in that moment, but switch it up, trust my body if it needs something different. Cold washcloth on the forehead and then I'm just imagining baby is coming out, coming down and out. And that's it guys. That is all of the sections that I have and the plan that I have for my labor. I hope you found this helpful. I will include a link in the uh, description for my actual labor plan. Feel free to use it if you find it helpful at all. But then like I mentioned, I will also have the blank ones as well that maybe you can utilize and find just as fun and empowering to use as I am. That's it. I hope you like this video. If you do, be sure to hit the like button and comment. Let me know if you've ever um, you know, come up with a labor plan yourself or if you have any questions or feedback on anything that I've shared. I would love to talk with you more about it. And be sure to subscribe as well if you want to stay connected to this community of women that just want Jesus to influence their pregnancy and um, also finding positive, encouraging ways to get through pregnancy. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to talk to you guys again soon. Bye.